Catch Trish before she went to work. Oh, you're in luck. She's only been hogging the bathroom for about an hour. Oh, Marlon, I haven't put my face on yet. Real quick, hot water run out. Sorry, Kathy, I didn't think. Oh, it's all right, I'll put the emotion on. I know now why you didn't hit the air dryer. It's bust. I've got one bit of good news, though. This is yours, Trish. Look it. Where'd you get that? Found it. Found it? Outside the woolly, I guess the, uh, guess the burglar must have, like, chucked it away. And you brought it straight round to me? Oh, that's sweet of you, Marlon. I don't suppose you found any of my stuff while you were out walking? No, no. Oh, uh, I better get myself ready for work, I'll see you later. See ya. Well, at least I got me locket back, even if it does remind me of what a rat Adam was. Did you believe a word of that? No? Think about it, Trish. If you just ransacked the place, why would you throw away a valuable locket instead of selling it? I suppose it seems a bit odd. But Marlon ain't no burglar. Hmm. But maybe he knows someone who is. Have you had a better quote? Only I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. I see. Thanks for letting us know. <sighs> Bad news. Oh. Roofing job in Otten. Clark's just cancelled. Did he give a reason? Didn't have to. Reckon last client getting burgled while we had the keys might have had something to do with it. No, oh, it'll soon blow over. You haven't been charged, I know. Typical of Angie Reynolds. Anything goes wrong, blame a dingle. She's not the only one thinks like that. Mud sticks. I'm trying to start a new business and this could get strangled at birth. Then we've got to find out who did it. Sort it out from there. Morning, Jason. We need to talk. What about? Crime and punishment. Now, I'm used to being hounded by the filth. Water for ducks back. But uh, Lisa gets upset, see? Yeah, they interviewed me too. I remember they had more reason in your case, eh? Zach, I think Rob Caffey's. You've got to believe that. Well, what's important is we get the heat off Lisa. So she can get back to work in peace. With you or without you, it doesn't matter to me. Clear? That's Crystal. Take a stroll, shall we? One way or another, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. What they taught you not to take things personally. I mean, there must be hundreds of unsolved crimes on the files of Hot and Nick. You don't understand, do you? It's been a really hard few months. I feel like I'm the worst mother in the world. And the only shred of pride I've got left to hang on to is the fact that I'm good at my job. How can I do that when I know the dingles are laughing at me? <sighs> Didn't sound like Lisa was doing much laughing when you took her in for questioning. I'm sorry, Ange. I don't think she's a thief either. Maybe. But she's a dingle, even if it is only by marriage. And I know that family's involved. I thought if I leaned on her, it might start to come out. Isn't that called harassment? Yeah. That's what they shout every time I try and do my job. It's not fair, Sean. Everyone moans about unsolved crimes, but they keep changing the rules to protect the guilty. You're starting to let it get you down too much. Ask any copper. It's getting so you can nick the villain with the loot, but then you're still worried some smart brief will get him off on some technicality. I don't think the Dingles could afford a smart lawyer. <laughs> They've probably got one in the family. I don't care, though. I'm gonna get them this time. It could be true, though. He might have found it in the street. He could have. You have to believe in miracles, Ashley. I don't. I reckon Kathy's right. There's something funny going on. Mm, it does seem to point to the Dingles. But not Lisa. She's been trying to put her troubles behind her, start a new job. She wouldn't risk that. Well, I doubt there'll be many people rushing to employ her after this. I should go and see her. Offer her any support I can. I've been looking for you, Vicar. Sad I had to find you in here. Are you suggesting there's something wrong with my bar? It's hardly the place for a man of the cloth to be spending his time when he's got parishioners who need his attention. Quite right, Edna. I must go and attend to my flock. I was meaning me. I wanted to talk to you about the company you're keeping. You know, it's hard to put a value in pounds and pence on some things. Cheers. Thanks. 
I only kept them to remind me of Alice and the times we spent together. They're probably not worth anything to anyone else, but to me, they're everything. I'm sorry, Kathy. I know this must be hard for you. Still, Trisha got to lock it back. Maybe I'll be a bit lucky too. When did this happen? This morning. Marlon found it outside the wool pack. That'll be Marlon Dingle. Now, why doesn't that surprise me? See ya. I did speak to the Reverend Thomas. I had hoped that he would take the warning. Oh, if anything, it's worse. I found him in the pub again this morning. He spends more time there than he does in the church these days. I suppose Miss Blackstock is quite an attractive woman. He's supposed to resist the temptations of the flesh. Oh, indeed. But I must point out that our church does not insist on vicars remaining celibate. You don't condone relationships outside marriage, I hope. Oh, marriage is a gift of God ordained for the procreation of children and to avoid fornication. Exactly, which means he's in sin. And it's starting to affect his work. I tried to talk to him today, but he'd rather consort with criminals than listen to the truth. Yep, yeah, thanks, Mr Bridger. I'll be straight over. I've been working on that all week. All church farm holdings. Yeah, I know all about them and you're wasting your time. They always use the Connelson vets. Always have. Always will. I'm not just sure. We had quite a good chat when we were going around the golf course. I gave him a few tips on his swing. I didn't know he played golf. Yeah, well, I find it very useful, socially and professionally. I'm going to get a contract that's really going to impress Zoe. So you've always got an eye out for something new, haven't you? <laughs> it's a shame Trisha had to learn the hard way, don't you? Hey. Trouble with pigs, Zach. Hmm? Hi, the uniform kind. Angie Reynolds has been giving Lisa an hard time, and now she's losing business because of the gossip. It's not my fault. You've got to convince him it had nothing to do with the robbery. Well, I believe him. He's a good lad at that, aren't you? Have <sighs> you been knocking him about, Zach? It looks like somebody beat me to it. Jason? I don't want to talk about it. I think you're going to have to if you want to help Lisa. Like I told them, I found it outside the wool pack. Look at me, Marlon. I'm a bit too old to believe in fairy stories. Oh, that's your problem. No, I don't think so. Because handling stolen goods is an offence. Not if you're giving it back to the rightful owner. One small item. And I have reason to believe you know where the rest is, which should be worth a warrant to search your place. You'll not find anything. Maybe. But I'm sure your roommates won't like the harassment. And if I draw a blank there, I can always start a new place of employment, which won't make you very popular here. Give me a break, Angie. Not a chance. If you so much as drop a sweet wrapper on the pavement, I'll pull you in. I know you're worried about what they'll do to you if you break the Dingle Code. Well, now you can worry about what I'll do to you if you don't. You OK, Marlon? No, no. Every time I try to make things better, I just make them worse. Oh, do you want to talk about it? Grub's ready. I'm going to get some fresh air. Somebody's in a hurry. Not like you, eh? Nothing to do but sit and wait for a ladyship. Cushy number, sure, for then. Won't be for long, though. Chris will want me back soon. Tara got a replacement lined up. Why? You after the job? Well, it is a nice car. So you had the filthy? I didn't say it about you. Very wise. Keep it that way and you'll live a long and healthy life. I appreciate you coming, but I... I really don't think there's anything you can do to help. I'm not going to stand by and watch while people accuse you of a crime you didn't commit. I can't blame them, really. Me and Jason had the key, so we had the opportunity. Everyone knows me and Zach are hard up, so they probably think that gives me a motive. That doesn't prove anything. I'd be a character witness for you any day. I know you're a good woman, Lisa. Oh, am I? I don't think so. If I was, I wouldn't have let myself get so wound up in my own troubles I, I didn't finish servicing that truck. It was an honest mistake. You can't go on blaming yourself. 
It's an empty chair every day at that table that does that for me. Only time can heal that, Lisa. Being punished for a crime you didn't commit wouldn't help. And I still say you're a good woman. If you weren't, you wouldn't care. Thanks. What do you want? More questions? I believe you can still assist us with our inquiries. We can either do it here or at the station. The choice is yours. to have something signed and sealed by now. I think you're going about it the wrong way. Oh, we've been easy. can't steam in on Zoe and put her off. Uh, back to work, well. Ah, uh, no. Laura and I will be stopping for a drink first. Well, that's good, cos Frankie and me have got an idea we want to put to you. Chris is going to want Terry back soon, so how about me as your new driver? I just wanted to apologise to you and Cathy for losing the keys and causing all this trouble. Well, the good news is we're on the case now. And we're not going to give up till we get all your stuff back. Oh, Marlon's already brought me the locket. He found it in the street outside. Well, that was lucky. <laughs> Maybe I should pop in the kitchen and congratulate him. Oh, uh, he's just popped outside for a breath of fresh air. Oh, see? Well, the way things are going, he'll probably stumble over the rest of the loot and save us all a lot of bother. I told you everything I know yesterday. If we go over it again, you might remember something else. This is a very serious crime. I'm sure you'll want to assist us with our inquiries. Look, Angie, I, I realise you've got a job to do, but Lisa's been very upset by all this. Yeah. A lot of people have been upset by this. Like Trisha finding a masked man standing over her. Or Cathy coming home to find a place has been ransacked. In my book, the victim comes first. Lisa's a victim too. Don't tell me you believe all this rubbish about me harassing the Dingles. That's between you and your conscience. She's certainly been the victim of malicious gossip. She's already lost one job because of it. Her and Jason were entrusted with the keys to Cathy's cottage. Those keys were then used to commit a crime. Now, that's either careless or criminal. Either way, it needs investigating. Lisa's been under a lot of pressure these past few months. I really think you should take that into account. If there's one thing that really gets up my nose... It's woolly do-gooders trying to tell me how to do my job. It's very easy being understanding when you're sat in a vicarage munching on cucumber sarnies, but it's different at the sharp end. You've no idea what it's really like. If you want to know about pressure, try talking to a copper who's been on the wrong end of a shotgun when they turn the pubs out on a Saturday night. I was just trying to help. Yeah, well, I don't need your help. Your job is saving souls, so why don't you clear off and get on with it and leave me to do mine? Do you think I'm out of touch? Eh? Just a lecture from Angie Reynolds, as if I was some bumbling country parson who doesn't understand what's going on in the real world. You don't see me like that. Of course not. It's true. I always try and see the best in people, but that's because I believe there's good in all of us somewhere. <laughs> Whenever I try and do good, it always ends up turning bad. I wonder if returning Trisha's locket falls into that category. I just wanted to make her feel better and end up in trouble from both sides. You should tell me the whole story. I don't think so. I uh, think I need somebody a bit more heavyweight. Oh, so you do see me as a bumbling country parson? Don't worry. I've been wrong about everything else. I, I just wanted to make her feel better after, after everything that had happened, you know? I, that's why I had to get the locket back. But who did you get it from? I'm going to get back to work. Adam was in here earlier, chatting up Lady Tara. Mm, no surprise there. It seems to make the effort for any one female except me. I don't know why I was so bothered about getting that locket back. I can't understand why he gave it to me in the first place. But perhaps you should ask him. I'm getting rather intrigued by that locket myself, especially after the conversation I've just had with Marlon. Mm, I suppose it might clear the air between me and Adam. Go, now. I can fit in behind the bar for you. There are those who think I should have more contact with the real world. OK, I'll do it. Oh, she's moved up in the world, following me, driving Lady Tara around. Don't know why everybody's so keen to work for the idle rich. I reckon it'll be a laugh. Same again, Bernice, and a pint for Sean. That's all right, Bernice, I'll do these. 
I'm sure that Ashley just needs another gentle reminder of where his duty lies. You think so? I hear you're turning the charm on Lady Tara now. What are you talking about? That's the way you work, isn't it? Big charm offensive. And when you got what you want, you dump them. I am not chatting up Lady Tara. That's not what I heard. Potentially, she's a very important client for the surgery. And if you haven't noticed, my job matters to me. A lot more than I ever did. Look, Trish, I'm really sorry it didn't work out between us. And I never meant to hurt you, honestly. I just don't understand you. Why'd you buy me a locket if you didn't want me? You didn't care about me. The truth is, I didn't buy it. Marlon did. What? It was going to be his birthday present to you. But when things went wrong, he thought it would make you happy if you thought it came from me. At least this way, you know there's someone out there who tried to put your happiness first. Oh, I thought you might be around next. There's obviously some parts of my anatomy that's not been trodden on yet. That is not a very nice word to greet your uncle. Well, pardon me for feeling a little jaded. I've been grilled by the police, threatened with murder and lectured by the vicar. It's not been a good day. Well, let me make it better. No, no thanks. The only help I need is from the SAS. I'm hoping they're going to come and airlift me out of here. That is the wrong attitude, Marlon. Us dingles should always stick to... Sigurd, don't bother with the family loyalty card. It's already been played and I was lucky to survive, I'm telling you. Life were a lot safer when you exiled me. Yeah, but I've welcomed you back now. And it's very distressing to find that another member of the clan has been threatening you. I never said that. My lips are sealed. You're not denying it with Cain, then? Thank you, Marlon. I knew we could sort this out between us. That's enough, isn't it, Roy? I'm knackered. Oh, no stamina, lad. We'll be finished in an hour. I won't finish now. I'm gonna go have a bath. All right, Dad, what can we do for you? Well, my mum's going to the pictures in Hotton and... Well, I know it's Mark's night off from the wool pack. Been making plans, have we? Look, I, I was going to give you a ring, but I've been busy. You're lucky she's a forgiving kind. I thought I'd cook you a meal, and I brought a video. Oof, lucky old Mark. Well, don't worry about me. I won't be playing Gooseberry. Well, uh, I'd better go back and get washed and ready. He didn't seem very pleased to see me. No, I won't worry about it. He's just tired, that's all. <clears throat> I think farming works a lot harder than expected. I soon perk up after he's had a good meal inside him. I suppose someone could have nicked the keys out of my pocket without me noticing. Like who? I don't know. Or won't say. There's a conspiracy of silence surrounding this case. I'm sure you could tell me plenty about it if you'd a mind to. Not me. I'm just an honest pig farmer here for veterinary advice. Pull the other one, Zach. It's got bells on it. So what's wrong with your pigs then, Zach? Don't be daft, Paddy. It was Cain who beat you up, wasn't it? I'll take that as a yes. Now I can deal with it. Well, I guess that's sorted then. Well, having been on the wrong end of one of Zach's left hooks, usually I'd say yeah. But Cain's a bit of an hard nut, isn't he? Zach's not getting any younger. You don't sound too confident. I think we'd better get Lisa a call. Mark's the only boy that's ever really noticed me. I don't want to lose him. Yeah, you don't put yourself down. Well, look, you're smart and you're pretty. You've got everything going for you. Mark's lucky you're even interested in him. He's sweet, boy. I was lucky to get you. I don't reckon she saw it like that. When I were your age, I would definitely hit back at Q. Yeah, well, I don't have boys fighting over me. I'm not like her. It's not to be ashamed of. The way Kelly will brought her a lot of troubles too, you know. You don't have to be like Kelly to keep a boyfriend. Just be yourself. I'm sure you'll be fine. Thanks for listening, Roy. It's all right. Any time. Look, me and Kelly think a lot of you, you know. So if Mark does give you anybody, I'll have us to reckon with, all right? 
going to make a stir fry. Marlon gave me the recipe, so it should be pretty good. Well, I won't rush yourself. Where's Ken? Upstairs. But Paddy's just phoned. I know what you're up to. Good, you can leave us to it. Ken, I want to see you! Zach, I don't want you to do this. I'm doing this for you. I know, but there's other ways of doing things. You could phone the police. All right, I know you'd never do that, but you could get the rest of the family round. Show them we all feel the same. If I had to arm behind you lot, all the police, you could dig it all out there and bury me. I've got to sort this out myself. Ken, get down here! I heard you the first time. I'll leave you to it then. What's the problem? You are. You have been stepping way out of line. Jason been squealing. And Marlon? Well, we just had a chat, that's all. Well, now you can have a chat with me. You know, when I was a kid, I used to hear stories about you. Zack Dingle, bare knuckle champion, hard man. And then when I got here, all I saw was a middle-aged bloke running to fat, gone soft. You'd be ready to try your luck, then? I don't want to fight you. I've got too much respect. Besides, We've got nothing to fight about. You robbed Cathy's! So? You're not telling me you've never nicked anything? Not for me, own. Cathy has been good to this family! OK. I'll remember that in future. Treat her better. You'll do more than that. Everything that was taken goes back where it belongs. It can't. I've already fenced it. That's your problem. Cos if Cathy doesn't get all her stuff back, you'll be looking for somewhere else to live after you get out of hospital. Don't push it, Zack. Respect can only get you so far. That's the way you want it. I'm ready. <laughs> 